Hi there, got another video for you. I think you might find this one quite interesting. It's another <coughs> motor control unit. <coughs> Excuse me. So it's for controlling DC motors. It's the direction I've been going in with uh, turntable motors for the last year or so. I find it adds more flexibility to uh, turntable designs that I've been producing. It enables me, for instance, to integrate a motor direct directly into the subchassis of a suspended turntable. So it enables the motor to drive the uh, subplatter without interfering with the suspension of the turntable as it tends to do when it's mounted on the top plate. Let's have a closer look at this uh, this demonstrator. It's a planar type turntable so it's very similar to the, the, Rager, the Rager type turntables. This one it has the subplatter recessed so it enables the Platter to run closer to the uh, the top of the turntable gives it a nice look in my opinion. And there you can see the DC motor. <coughs> it's a Maxon motor, so they're a very good quality Swiss-made motor. You often find them in uh, DC-driven turntables. I've used one in this case. You can see the 6082 alloy subplatter there. Um, I do I actually make these and uh, and sell them uh, for Rega turntables etc and any other sort of uh, custom turntables people want to build. I've got a workshop um, in Lancashire, England and uh, I've got a, a company Fidelity Designs Limited uh, that enables me to sell uh, some turntable accessories and other things. But if we have a look around the back you can see an opto sensor, so it's a reflective opto sensor, an infrared sensor. And if I can get a bit closer to it, you can see that uh, well, it's about three millimeters away from the the subplatter, so it's no chance of it actually physically touching anything or interfering with the drive system. So let me put the platter on the turntable, and then I'll show you the uh, the motor controller in action. Okay, the platter's on. Here's the motor controller. You can see uh, four knobs there. We've got uh, two knobs each for the two different speeds that you can uh, set up the controller for. So 33 and 45 RPM in this case. It can be any speed that uh, that you want. And this controller it can be integrated with any motor, DC motor. It's not uh, just for the Maxon motor. It's uh, highly versatile. It can be used for in various different setups, it can sense the speed of a subplatter or the outside of the platter or the inside of a platter in the case of a lint turntable. And it can also be set up for various different voltage ranges and I'll show you a few other features. We've got two controls. Um, one control is for it's um, a speed regulation control and the other control is uh, a physical um, it controls the voltage going to the motor so it controls um, the physical speed of the of the motor but um, the uh, the actual speed control system controls the current to the motor which I find is um, it's a more um, subtle way of controlling the speed of the motor in my opinion okay I'm waffling here so let's turn it on Click it on. You can see the speed increasing. We settle at 33 RPM. Let's uh, turn it off and on again. Okay. See the light flashing there? Well, that's actually indicating that we're getting a pulse from the subplatter. So, you can see it flashing. And look, watch this light here. When that lights, it means we've come into regulation. So, the motors run up to its. Uh, projected speed and then the control system has started to regulate the current to the motor to hold it at that speed. Uh, it's, as I say it's a closed loop link it's a closed loop system linked into the output of the frequency coming from the, the platter speed. Let me um well I'll flick it up to forty five, so we want to go up to forty five. Same thing again, no problem. Back down to thirty three. straight back down to 33 
put my finger on the platter and slow it down. You can see the speed decreasing there. Now the motor is actually fighting against me here, so the system is actually increasing the torque to the motor until it goes into regulation again and uh, it becomes limits the current to the motor to uh, hold the speed. I'll um, I'll show you how you set this system up uh, from scratch. I think I'll uh, yeah I'll do it with the 45. So I'll put it up to 45. Regulation lights come on. I'm just trying to do this so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to take all regulation off now. So now you can see there's no regulation. The motor is just freely spinning 47, 48 rpm. If I adjust the speed of it, I'm going to increase the speed. And we're going up 52, 54, 55. Okay, I'm going to bring the speed down. So we were setting up this system. We turn regulation off. So we turn this uh, control all the way anti-clockwise to turn the regulation off. Then we'd set the speed of the turntable to maybe 47, 48 RPM. So just over the uh, the projected speed that we want, which is 45 RPM. Come up a bit high there, so let me just reduce it a little bit. Let me take it down. Yeah, about 48. And now I'm going to turn up the uh, motor control. And we're going to reach the point where the motor control is going to kick in. It's just kicked in there. See the lights come on. And we're running, what are we running there? 46? So we need a little bit more control. You've got to be, it's quite a fine um, adjustment here, so you've got to be a little bit patient. You take your time just to set it. So there you go. We're back on 45 now. I mean, the, uh, the speed control display, it's calibrated and it is accurate. Obviously it's just a two digit display, so it's only accurate to within one RPM. I've got a strobe disc on, disc on there, so if I want to set it up to the um, exact speed, I can use a strobe and I can uh, set it up, you know, precisely. But um, the speed dis display is a great function, I think, because it gives you an idea whether or not your turntable is operating um, in the ballpark as such. You know that it's more or less running at the right speed, so you know nothing's wrong with it so it gives you an indication when you turn it on that all is well you know if you, if you see 44 40 rpm something like that you need to adjust your speed or you need to attend to the turntable so to me it's a really useful feature just one more thing there's another switch here now this gives um when it's in the up position it's in the the control unit's in the it's in a light damping uh, mode. So because this plat is fairly light, it's just a Rager type turntable. So it's got an acrylic platter about two centimeters thick, so probably weighs a couple of kilograms at the most. Now if we were using a heavier platter, a five kilogram platter for instance, you need a more um, aggressive sort of motor control because there's so much. Uh, inertia in the platter that the system needs to operate a little bit more aggressively. Now if you flick that switch down it gives you that mode to allow you to use it uh, with turntables that use a heavier platter. So, And also inside you can set a voltage range, a, a sort of a, a safe voltage range of adjustment for the motor so that sort of stops uh, people or maybe someone who's using your turntable turning it into a helicopter so you know sometimes you don't I mean this prototype control unit it's got a big range of adjustment because um, you know I want to use it for testing various different types of motors but you can set it up to say within half a volt so your speed uh, control range it could be for instance 4 to 4.5 volts something like that so it stops um, the um, you know the motor sort of being used outside of its uh, useful range um, so you know you've got loads of, and there's also it's also internally configurable for 
having the sensor on different parts of the turntable so it could be operating off a smaller sub platter or a medium sized sub platter on a limb for instance you know a 165 millimeter diameter sub platter or it can operate on the outside of the platter so it can operate from here or it can operate on the inside of uh, you know a limb type sub platter that uh, is um, enables you to do that because it's the way it's cast it's, uh, it's hollow on the inside so you can read the speed of the platter from various different locations so you've got all sorts of options with this uh, system that's why I developed it because it enables me to uh, gives me like I said at the beginning of the video a greater flexibility when uh, designing different uh, turntables hopefully um, I'll get this uh, Hopefully, I, you know, I hope to get um, a commercial version of this system uh, together at some point, either as a kit or um, a motor control module that people can integrate into their own turntable systems. Probably just supply it. So it runs on 24 volts. It runs on a 24 volt supply, so um, you just need to supply. I mean, I've just got a power adapter uh, plugged in. Uh, doesn't require a vast amount of... Uh, amps for using these small motors and um, you know like I say you know so many different types of motors you can use with it you know this could be integrated into practically uh, you know most turntables out there I could think of ways of um, using this system so you know I think it's uh, I think it's going to be something really useful for the future so hopefully I'll uh, I'll push this one forward and uh, you know, we will have some sort of uh, version people can uh, people can buy, or you know, buy it as a kit or circuit boards, or put it together themselves, or maybe a complete unit. I don't know yet, but uh, if you see this, um, let me know what you think of it. I think it's uh, quite interesting. Um, you know, I hope some other people watch this video and find it interesting too. Okay, more videos soon. Bye now.